This time on Signals Everywhere, we're reviewing the RTL SDR blog Active L Band Patch Antenna with a frequency range of 1525 to 1637 MHz tuned specifically for the Inmarsat and Iridium satellite bands. This Bias T powered active antenna can also be used alongside the new modified RTL SDR drivers to enable us to easily activate our Bias T within SDR Sharp. If you're interested in software-defined radio and radio communications projects in general, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and smack the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future content. Let's get started right off the bat with the antenna kit itself. Of course, it's going to come with the antenna that has a mounting hole on the bottom, as well as a typical male SMA connector, which can be used with any software-defined radio. That mounting connector will go into any tripod, as well as the one that comes with the kit here. This is a flexible tripod, similar to those seen in uh, similar RTL-SDR kits, and then of course some extension feed line. From there, we also have this nice little suction cup mount. You simply need to feed the connector over the ball mount here, and then push the ball mount into the suction cup itself, and then just screw it on tight, and adhere this antenna wherever you would like. This antenna happens to be an active antenna, meaning that it does require bias voltage to be sent down the line. Now in this case, I'm going to be showing you how to install the modified drivers for the RTL-SDR so that we can enable this right from SDR Sharp itself. We simply grab the RTL-SDR.dll file from the download and then just drop it into the SDR Sharp folder. Overwrite the file if you need to and then start up SDR Sharp. Make sure that you have your RTL SDR connected to the computer and the SDR itself is connected to your new antenna. From here in SDR Sharp, we want to go to the gear icon in the upper left hand corner and make sure the RTL SDR is selected. Hit the play button and then go back and check the offset tuning option. With the new beta drivers, this will enable our bias T, which in turn sends power to the active Inmarsat and Iridium antenna, turning on the built in LNA. Due to the weak signal nature of many Immersat era voice calls, I wanted to go ahead and give this antenna a try doing exactly that. Now in this case, I happen to be trying to receive this signal indoors, and as you can see, I'm not really getting a strong enough signal for a proper decode. Now again, I am indoors and do not have perfect line of sight in this particular situation, however... I did find that if I was able to take one of these cheap Dollar Tree uh, splash guards and remove the... Uh, handle from the center, this could be placed through the mounting hole on the tripod and was able to give me a nice ground plane that was able to substantially increase the signal levels I had and make it very easy to decode the signal even though I did not have direct line of sight and was indoors. Hello. Hello. Now that we've played around with this antenna indoors a little bit, I thought it was time to take it outside and see what we can really do with a direct line of sight. Now right now the signals aren't that strong, so let's go ahead and tune them in. Here you can see I'm making use of a very simple tripod mount to make it as simple as possible to point the antenna directly at the Inmarsat satellite. As you can see, we have some pretty strong signals here. Let's go ahead and open up Jero and see some of the things that could be decoded through the Emersat satellite service. While the Emersat Aero service itself, due to spot beams, may not necessarily have the strongest signals, as one might expect from Emersat's other services, these signals can be quite strong, and without a doubt, we were able to get a very, very nice decode of all of the typical 600 and 1200 bit per second channels within the Emersat service. Where this antenna really shines in my opinion, however, is in the use of Iridium and tools such as the Iridium Toolkit. Typically on this channel, I try to stray away from the Iridium satellite service out of respect for the privacy of individuals who may be using it. However, if you happen to be interested in this service, I can't recommend a better antenna for the job. I've tried multiple antennas, including a modified GPS QFH antenna with a specific LNA and saw filter, and still was not able to get better decode rates than I am with this antenna. So let's go ahead and fire up my virtual machine, and I'll show you how good some of these decode rates just happen to be. 
While receiving data on the GR Iridium software, if we take a look to the right hand side here, we look at our OK average. And as you can see, we are in the high 70s for this, which is a very good reception percentage. Uh, typically, I was getting between 35 and 10 percent prior to this, and you really do need something above 65 in order to get some decent audio captures from this particular satellite constellation, and you will no doubt have a problem doing so with the RTL SDR L-band antenna. Here you can see a little sneak peek of the Iridium decoding process. Now for the sake of privacy, I'm not playing full audio clips here, and I'm not really showing the decoding process, but rest assured that if you're looking at playing with Iridium, this is definitely one of the best antennas for the purpose. Are you new to software to find radio? Maybe you've been doing it for a while and you're working on a project, or maybe you just need help with something. Well, if you're not already a member, I wanted to remind you guys that we have a Signals Everywhere Discord server, which is available to anyone and everyone who's interested in software-defined radio and radio communications in general. We do a lot of community projects in here, among other things, and of course there's tons of behind-the-scenes content here as well. If you'd like to get involved, head over to SignalsEverywhere.com forward slash Discord. So if you happen to be in the market for a new Iridium or Intersat satellite antenna, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that this should be on the top of your list. I've had no problems with the antenna, and of course it has great build quality, is amazingly flexible with the tripod mount, and of course it is more or less waterproof, assuming you have some coax seal for the SMA connector, and it is by far one of the best antennas I've seen on the market to date for the hobbyist interested in L-band satellite communication. If you're interested in purchasing one of these antennas, you can buy one at the rtl-sdr.com website or use the affiliate link in the description below and a portion of that will go to funding the channel itself. Speaking of funding the channel, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons whom without I wouldn't be here doing this today. You guys have been amazingly supportive, not only financially, but also motivationally, as well as helping me kind of get through some of the rougher moments that... Uh, are involved with uh, you know trying to plan everything out and get these videos to you guys so huge shout out to everyone if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself again look in the description below I'll have a link over to the patreon page there are a ton of benefits including early release access to content among many other things like behind the scenes and more so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you all in the next one